Welcome, everyone. I am so excited to have you here. I have a few people on live Zoom with me, and I'm also live streaming into a Facebook group and recording this. So I have three things going on right now. So I'm so thrilled to have you here tonight. And the focus of this class is to work on de-stressing for the holidays. So if you have not already grabbed blankets, pillows um, for props. If you um, have candles that lit, that would be wonderful or go get some. If you have any oils, we're gonna work a little bit with essential oils and a little bit of self massage. Um, so if you have some essential oils or even if you don't, coconut oil would work fine. So let's just spend a couple seconds here getting your um, space set up so that it is beautiful and that it is soft lights and it's calming and de-stressing. And I can see a couple of you in the background. So I see Kate's all ready to go with beautiful things around her. And it is important because this time of year can be so stressful. And most of us here um, are women and we are taking on, you know, the roles of extra roles, roles of Santa, buying gifts and sending cards and baking cookies and worrying about where everybody is and who's coming. And especially this year with things being so crazy. So I want to take this next hour to really get you so calm, relaxed, and really in a place of let's enjoy this time of year. It is my favorite time of year. And there's so much wonder and beauty and awe in this time of year. And I wanna get us in a place where we can really enjoy that and not be stressed. All right, so hopefully you've gotten everything that you need. The other thing I'm going to do, if you don't already have music, um, I love to have music. So I am going to copy a link in the Zoom room for you. And if I can, uh, I'd like to do it in the Facebook group too, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that. I'd love for you to have some music so you can get your own. If you just wanna put some soft, um, what I have is um, Christmas music. All right. So feel free to hit the link and we're going to get started. So the first pose that I would love you to come to is just a simple, easy pose. You can do this a couple different ways. If you just want to sit Indian style, that's fine. If you want to bring your feet together and your knees wide, that's fine. And depending on your activity for the day, you might be really ready to have a nice opening here. If you're a little tight and that's not comfortable, go ahead and prop your knees and sit. And then let's bring, if you do have any oils, let's go ahead and bring them into the equation. And I'm gonna have you start to self massage and I'll explain it to you. And then I'm gonna um, start talking about our topic for tonight. So what I'd love you to do, if you have some oil, what I love to do is just take a couple drops and then put them in the arch of your feet. So just where your arch is, couple drops, and I'll tell you a funny story and just start to rub them into the arches of your feet. We put so much pressure on our feet. We're on them, many of us, most of the day, uh, unless you have a, a job where you're sit sit sitting, which I've been at a computer, I'm not kidding, for 30 hours this week and I've been on an online conference on Zooms. Um, so I've been sitting a lot this week weekend, but I'm often on my feet. So just get in there and really rub the insides of your feet, give them a little TLC. And I love to use like a lavender oil at night that's very calming, um, but also in the morning I'll, I'll use a peppermint oil that's very energetic. So whatever your scent is, whatever you have at home. And while you're doing that, I want to just kind of go over some mindful tips for de-stressing through the holiday. The first thing is to accept imperfection. Sometimes we set ourselves up for disappointment because we want everything to be perfect. If you're anything like me, I want my house to be decorated just beautifully so everyone feels 
welcome when they come. Um, my kids love to be here. I just want everything to look beautiful. Then I want to have enough food and I want to bake cookies and I want to make sure I have everyone's favorites and I want to send cards. I used to send like 200 and I've gone down over the years. I used to hand make them all. Um, and each year I get a little bit, I try to stress my, take my stress down on the card, but I still love to receive them. So I still love to send them. And so I try to you know, make that an easier uh, thing so I can enjoy it. I, I set myself up for expecting too much for it to be just perfect when really it doesn't need to be perfect. We just, your family just wants to be around you for the holidays. And if we don't expect perfection, we'll enjoy this season so much more. So I just encourage you to get, get, get through this season, this beautiful season, and don't expect too much. Just, just do what you can. Don't overwhelm yourself. Be organized, make lists, but try not to take too much on and expect too much and try to make things so perfect that you don't end up enjoying it. The second thing, and if you guys want to move around and, and just work on your toes a little bit now, feel free to do that. The second thing is don't lose sight of what really counts. You know, I'm, I'm a person of faith. I believe that this season is just such a beautiful, beautiful season. And, you know, no matter where you all come from and no matter what your beliefs are, this is a time of year where we can all agree to get along, no matter where we fall on the political spectrum, no matter whether we agree with vaccines or not, we can all agree that Christmas, the holidays, getting ready for the new year, it's such a beautiful time of year where people come together and people are friendlier, kinder, people love deeper and, it, and do great things, they give generously. So let's, let's never lose sight of what really counts. I have two more, but before I do that, we're gonna just move a little bit. So if you had your feet crossed, let's go ahead and switch. If your feet were together and that's getting a little tiring for you, feel free to, to go Indian style now, however you want. Um, we're gonna do a seated twist now. So I'm gonna sit Indian style and I'm gonna put my left hand on my right knee and I'm just gonna kind of twist back. So you can bring your right hand behind you and just kind of hold the twist there. If you would like, you can put a couple drops of oil on your right hand and gently massage your neck area. That is another area that we really should give some love and a quick joke on the self massage thing. My yoga studio um, just was always had China gel massages at the end and it was one of my favorite, favorite things. I enjoyed it so much because I would never take the time to give my, do any self love on my neck or uh, my feet or anything. And they would come around and they'd massage our necks when we were in Shavasana. And um, when COVID started, they stopped doing that. And I'll never forget the first time they said, oh, we'll come around and just put your hand out and we'll put China gel in it and you can self-massage. And my girlfriends and I were like, self-massage? Who would, who would want to do that? And now we're in the season where it's truly our only option. So I've been doing it in my yoga training with all my fellow yogis. And I've actually come to, you know, just love to get the kinks out of my neck because for a lot of people, we carry all of our stress and tension in the neck. So we're just going to be on this side for another minute or two, and then we'll switch. So the third thing is to respond to everything with kindness. We can't change how other people act during the stresses of the holiday season, but we can change the way we respond. So when we encounter a difficult person or a difficult situation, or if maybe we even have a difficult conversation with a family member or something like that, let's just try to remember to respond with kindness. And I often find that is just a great way to go through life. When, when we have people that are a little um, ouchy, sometimes your smile can just melt them and change everything. So just keep that in mind. If you come across people shopping that maybe are rushing around like crazy and might be stressed out, just keep that in mind and always respond with kindness. 
And we're gonna go ahead and switch to the other side now, put it, putting your right hand on your left knee, bringing your left hand behind you, and then just turning your head back. You can look over that shoulder. And again, if you'd like to do a little self massage on your neck, you can take your left hand and massage the, the left side of your neck and try to get in there. And if you feel any kinks, really work on that. And the last mindful tip to de-stress for the holiday season is to start thinking about your resolutions. Uh, because I'm a health coach, one of the most, um, the, one of the top resolutions people make every single year is to get healthier. So we hear that a lot. And January is often a very, very big year for us. The second one is people like to do better financially. There's a lot of um, people who make these grandiose resolutions and then they give up on them a couple weeks into January. So start small with your resolutions. I'm getting ready to do an activity with my family while we have everyone home over the holidays. And maybe this can be something you guys do with your families. And I'm coming up with some questions and I'm gonna have it all typed up and we're gonna sit around the kitchen table. We're gonna have a little cacao ceremony with um, chocolate ceremonial uh, uh, little pieces that will melt, we'll make like a hot chocolate. And we're gonna do a meditation together and a prayer. And we're gonna do our goals, set our goals for the, years, the year together and go through all the categories of family goals. We're all spread out now. So I'm going to suggest a, a monthly Zoom that our family can all come together and catch up so we can feel more connected even though we're far apart. And we're gonna have business goals and health goals and all of that. So think small though, and be kind to yourself with your goals. So often people set these goals because they're not happy where they are and they end up making you feel not so good about where you are. So think small and be kind to yourself when you're setting those goals and while you're getting ready to move into the holiday season. All right. Now we're going, going to untwist from that position and we're gonna do a cow face pose. So we're gonna bring our left knee facing straight in front of you and then bring that right foot over and try to get the knees to stack. For some of you, this may be very uncomfortable. So just do the best you can with this. Again, in, in any yoga pose, we never want you to experience pain. So this should, if you need to prop, um, some people might want to prop their lower foot so it's a little bit higher. You might need to prop both. If you wanna put a pillow or a block under, underneath you, that is fine. We're not gonna stay here too, too long, but we're gonna do both sides. And if you would like to come together, bringing your hands to prayer, that would be wonderful. And if you're comfortable, just close your eyes for a moment. And just think about what are your favorite traditions that you do through the holidays? Things that bring you great joy and start thinking about that. Instead of thinking about your massive to-do list that grow longer by the day and looking at the date and saying, how on earth has December started to fly by like it is, think about all the things that bring you such joy during this season. You know, for us, we have a beautiful candlelight Moravian church service on Christmas Eve, and it's gonna be online this year. And so rather than being terribly disappointed about that, we're gonna plan a nice family dinner beforehand, and we're gonna have candles in our home and dim the lights and try to, try to put ourselves in that beautiful place. We'll have Christmas carols. We'll do all the, the beautiful things. What brings you joy? Being around family. Maybe you can't be around everyone that you'd like to be around this year. Maybe doing a, a Zoom and or a FaceTime and bringing family in would bring you great joy. Maybe making your favorite cookies for your family. Just think about all those things that you love this time of year that bring you such happiness. Okay, we're gonna unravel and do the same thing on the other side. So bringing the right leg down to the bottom, facing the knee straight in front of you, and then crossing the left leg over. And you might find that one side is much looser than the other. Sometimes I'm super tight on one side and not so bad on the other. And if your knees aren't perfectly aligned, 
it's fine. Just try to get them on top of each other. Again, if you need to prop. And let's come back to prayer center, closing the eyes if you're comfortable with that. Think about your, your favorite memories growing up from, from the holidays. I'm sure none of the favorite memories that are popping up in your mind require stress. They require or their laughter, their beautiful songs, the smell of, of a Christmas meal cooking, Christmas trees and villages and church services. I want you just to come to your, your favorite memories and know that what you focus on, you find. And if you can focus on all of those beautiful things that are coming into your mind right now, if you can focus on that over your to-do list, you're gonna experience so much joy, so much more happiness during this time. And if you're playing the Christmas music, I hope you're enjoying that. I have no music on my end because I didn't want it to interfere if you were playing it on yours. But that's what I'd have going right now. I love to play soft Christmas music. The playlist that I shared in the Zoom, I'll also share um, in the Facebook group and with the recording. It's just a, it's a jazz Christmas, a cozy Christmas playlist from Spotify very soft and relaxing and calming. All right, we're gonna slowly come out of this and we're gonna bring our feet together one more time. And we're gonna actually fold over and come into like a cobbler pose. So you can bring your elbows to your knees if that's comfortable for you and you can just gently lower down. If you need to prop with a pillow or a bolster, we're just gonna gently fold forward and bend over. Folding, the poses that I selected for tonight are all de-stressing poses. And folding is so wonderful for your back. It really elongates your spine, your spinal column, stretches everything. So the closer you can get to the ground, the more you'll feel the stretch. And you might be able to really you know, send your inhales to wherever you're feeling this. I don't feel it in my back at all. I feel it in my inner thighs. So wherever you might be feeling it, go ahead and inhale, send your breath there. And inhale, peace anything that brings you peace. Inhale that and exhale anything that stresses you, that makes you feel overwhelmed. We're gonna get rid of all of that tonight and hopefully you can come back to this over the next couple of weeks anytime you're feeling a little stress. And remember, we have total control over letting ourselves get too stressed over putting too much on our to-do list. And I have some more tips for you I'll share at the end of class. When you're ready, we're gonna slowly come on out of this pose and we're gonna get into tabletop. So we're gonna bring your knees about hips, hip distance apart, bringing those shoulders over the wrist, nice flat back, crown of your head is uh, leaning towards the front of the room. And we're gonna go ahead and take a deep inhale and on your inhale, round your back, bringing your chin into your chest. And then on your exhale, Go ahead and dip your belly down and look up towards the ceiling. And we're gonna do a few rounds of cat-cow on your breath, inhaling and rounding the back and exhaling and lowering 
the belly and looking up. If you have another form that you like to do, maybe you like to do circles with your hips, maybe that'll feel really great on your back. Go ahead and do that. Just remember to do both sides. Maybe you just like doing a gentle twist and looking back over your right shoulder and then looking back over your left. But we're just gonna do this for a minute or so. Another really wonderful hack, anytime you're starting to feel stress come on, um, I have definitely had a little stress myself this weekend. I just really focus on my breathing. When I start to feel it coming, I'll, I'll rub some essential oils on my wrist so I can smell the calming effects of the lavender oil. I will really focus on breathing, deep inhales. Sometimes I'll breathe in for four counts, hold it for four counts, and then exhale for four counts. And just slowing down my breath will really help calming me down. All right, when you're ready, we're gonna move into puppy pose. So keeping your knees and hips high, we're gonna go ahead and walk the hands out long. And if you're able to come all the way down with your chin, feel free to do that. If you need to come to your forehead instead, that is fine as well. When I come to my chin, I really feel this stretch in my shoulders. So you take this where you're most comfortable. Again, if you have a pillow nearby, maybe you wanna put that under your chin. And we're gonna just hold that pose for a minute. opening those shoulders. Feeling it in your side body, breathing through the pose. This can be a little bit intense if you have tight shoulders for sure. But again, a wonderful de-stressing yoga pose that you can come back to. And then just coming up onto your hands back into, now you're kind of in a wide, uh, wide um, stance here. We're gonna go ahead and tuck the toes and come on into your first downward facing dog. So for your first one, we're gonna go ahead and pedal the feet out, coming up onto the right toes, left toes, really taking your time to come into this pose, relaxing your head, you can shake it from left to right slowly. You can say yes or no with your head. And after you've gotten settled and walked it out, feel free to start pressing your heels down towards the floor, bringing your, your hips back, up and back and pressing those heels down. You should feel a really great stretch all the way down your legs. And we're gonna go from this pose very slowly and with control right into a plank pose. And then we're gonna go ahead and lower the hips down coming into upward facing dog. Looking up towards the ceiling if you can and holding it here. And we're just gonna go back and forth and do this a couple times. Nice deep breaths. Take a nice inhale and on your exhale, tucking those toes, we're gonna go back to downward facing dog. If you wanna pedal it out again, you can do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring those heels, reaching them towards the ground and slow with control, moving into plank, keeping your tummy nice and tight and then lowering down coming into upward facing dog, looking up. If this is too much, feel free to come down onto your elbows. That's fine and being more in a cobra pose. 
If that stretch feels great for you like it does me, go ahead and stay in Upward Facing Dog. Taking a big inhale and on your exhale, tucking your toes and coming up into, down, into Downward Facing Dog again. Big inhale. On your exhale, let's lift the right leg high and go ahead and bend the leg, opening up your hip. While you're here, you can circle your ankle a few times to one side and then a few times to the other. And then just straighten that leg out and bring it back down to the mat. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Big inhale. On your exhale, lift the left leg high and then bend the knee, open the hip. And let's go ahead and do circles on that side as well. And make sure you do a few the other direction. And then straighten that leg out and bring that back down to the mat. And then slowly let's lower down onto your knees on all four. We're going to come and sit up on our feet and we're going to do one more twist here. So while you're sitting on your feet, if this is comfortable, that's great. If you need to sit on a block, feel free to do that as well, whatever you're most comfortable. And we're going to do one more twist here, putting your left hand again on your right knee, bringing your right hand behind you and try to see if you can go a little bit deeper this time, bringing your chin to kind of get close to that right shoulder. If you wanna close your eyes, feel free to do that. Keep breathing. Just a couple breaths here. And then we're gonna come back to center and then putting your right hand on your left knee, bringing your left hand behind, same thing on the other side, bringing that chin close to the shoulder. Taking a few breaths here. Wonderful, come back to center. And if you did sit on a block, you can remove that. Bringing your hands back down to the mat, we're gonna come back up into downward facing dog again. Taking a big inhale. On your exhale, lifting that right leg nice and tall. And then with control, we're gonna bring the knee to nose. And then we're gonna go ahead and lower the foot all the way down. And then come on up into warrior one. Breathing into this pose, reaching your hands towards the ceiling squaring your hips. And then we're gonna do a twist, bringing the right hand all the way around, looking over the right shoulder. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and open up into warrior two, bringing the right hand forward, left hand back, lunging into that right foot, squaring those hips, breathing, stretching, feeling your feet, feeling like you're pulling them out apart. And then bringing those hands down to frame the front foot bringing the right foot back into downward facing dog. And let's go ahead and take a very big deep inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. Lion's roar. Let's do that one more time. Inhale through the nose and big exhale through the mouth. One more inhale. On your exhale, let's go ahead and lift the left leg high. And then we're gonna bring it with control to the front of the mat. You can bring the right heel down and then slowly come up. 
into warrior one, reaching towards the ceiling, squaring those hips. And then bringing that right hand, excuse me, left hand down, twisting to the left, looking over your left shoulder. We're gonna twist on the other side now. Breathing, I feel this in my back calf muscle, my right calf muscle. So I'll send my breath there. And then bringing that left hand back up and then flowing into warrior two. Bringing your right hand towards the back of the mat, left hand facing forward, squaring those hips, breathing. And then cartwheeling those hands down with control, bringing the left foot back, going back into downward facing dog. Big inhale and exhale. Bringing the right foot up on your exhale, we're gonna with control bring that right foot to be on the right next to your hand, kind of coming into a lizard pose. We're not gonna do a lizard pose, but that's what we're gonna try to get our foot angled at. And then with control, we're gonna do the same thing with the left. I'm gonna turn my camera so you guys can see me a little better. And we're gonna come into goddess, goddess squat. Yogi squat, goddess squat. Calming the breath. If you can, take those elbows and press them into the insides of your knees, getting a better stretch, keeping your spine long and tall, looking straight in front of you. Wonderful. And then bringing those hands down, coming on up. We're gonna do a wide forward fold from here. So bringing those feet out a little wider, heel toe them out just a little wider. And then bringing your hands down, if you're able to come flat handed, feel free to do that. If you need blocks to, to do this more comfortably, that's fine too. But really releasing the head and letting go. And take this literally, letting go of anything that is not serving you right now, any stress that you're feeling. We're just gonna let that all go away tonight. And then let's go ahead and bring the toes and heels back in, bringing those feet closer together. And then we're gonna roll up one vertebra at a time into standing position. Take those shoulders up, back and down, coming into mountain pose. We're gonna be transitioning back down to the floor. So what you can do now is just find, find a seat on the back of your mat, preferably. And we're gonna do a little more folding. So for me, folding isn't always the most comfortable thing. It's not my favorite pose either, folding forward. But what we're gonna do, if you are seated on the floor, we're gonna go ahead and spread the feet just a little bit apart. And if you want to bring a pillow down with you, a bolster, if this is more comfortable for you, we're gonna lean over it. So just get yourself set up so you can be nice and comfortable with a forward fold. I like to bring my heels in and my, let my toes kind of flop open. And when you're ready, go ahead and settle into a fold. If it's comfortable for you to bring your forehead down, go ahead and do that. If it's a little more comfortable to cross your hands and rest your head on your hands, you can do that. We're gonna rest into this fold.
we're going to focus on gratitude. The best Christmas gift is to realize how much we already have. How blessed we already are. So as you're folding into this position, and you're inhaling and focusing on your breath, let's focus on everything that we have that we are so grateful for. Instead of focusing on how our holiday might be a little bit different this year, maybe it won't be so many people in our homes, maybe we won't be traveling to different homes. Let's focus on what we do have and what we do have control over. If you've had a cheek down on one side, let's go ahead and change it. Make sure you get both sides. We're not going to be here for too much longer. And then when you're ready, let's just roll back up nice and slowly. Take away any props if you have props. And we're gonna transition all the way down to our back and we're gonna bring our feet up and we're gonna come into a supported bridge, boat, excuse me, bridge pose or just a bridge pose. So whatever is most comfortable for you at this point. We're gonna bring our hands down, fingers facing towards the heels knees are up and on our, take a big inhale and on our exhale, we're gonna raise the hips up and you can stay here unsupported. If you'd like support, feel free to put your block underneath your glutes. But this is another pose that when I did my research is a nice de-stressing pose. So we're gonna hold it and we'll come down and we'll go back up a couple, just a couple times. While you're here, go ahead and let your glutes be loose. We, we tend to tighten everything up when we go into this pose. But let's just try to relax the glute muscles a little bit. Take a big inhale. And on your exhale, let's go ahead and roll down slowly one vertebra at a time and then tip the hips a little bit forward. And then we're gonna come back up on your next exhale. And we're gonna just move through that a couple of times. So rolling down one vertebra at a time, tipping the hips forward and then rolling back up. And down, just do this a few times on your breath. Again, if you want a little more relaxation, you can close your eyes. Okay, and on your next one, let's hold it up one last time.
and then roll it down. One of the positions that um, is very good for de-stressing is a shoulder stand. And so I will show you this one and cue it, but if you are more comfortable just bringing your feet up, we are gonna do legs up the wall. So this can kind of prep you for that. You're welcome just to start here with your feet facing towards the ceiling. But if you'd like to try the shoulder stand, we're just gonna roll up and bring the elbows down and put your hands on the back of your glutes and then try to support the lower back, bringing those feet straight up really watching that you're not throwing all of your weight into your head and neck, that your shoulders are really helping support you here. So having, having this um, position really helps drain everything down. We're on our feet so, so very much. So this is just a great pose to really relax you and de-stress you. Again, if that's too much, feel free to gently roll down and just keep those feet up in the air. Also, so wonderful for you. So many benefits. If you wanna play with that and go back up into shoulder stand, try it again. You can certainly do that. If while you're up there, you'd like to play a little bit and bring the legs out to a V and bring them back up, be a little creative. You can do that as well. And then when you're ready, gently, slowly roll down. And right from here, we're gonna find the wall and we're gonna do legs up the wall next. So wherever you are, if you have a chair nearby, you could certainly do this on a chair. If you have a wall, you can do this next to the wall. And the best way to get into legs up the wall. Let's see if I show you this way you might be able to see is to really scoot your bottom right up to the wall, laying back, bringing those feet up and then turning so that your bottom is facing the wall and you can bring your feet right up. If you have a sandbag or any weighted thing you'd like to put on your feet, you can do that in this position. And then just rest where your hands are most comfortable. I like to put one on my belly, one on my heart in this pose. If you have a blanket nearby, feel free to wrap a blanket over you, but I want you to really find a peaceful way to enjoy legs up the wall. A lot of people will do this pose as their savasana pose at the very end of class. We're gonna still do our normal shavasana, but we're gonna enjoy legs up the wall right now. And I'm gonna give you a few more things that you can do during this crazy busy time of the year that might really help you. And I'm gonna practice what I preach and follow all of these things as well. And there's just nine things. The first one is to learn to say no. This was something that, boy, it took me many, many years to, uh, to learn. And I say yes to everything because I was always a people pleaser and I didn't want it to let anyone down, but it would be at my own expense. I'd end up stressing myself out and getting so overwhelmed and then not feeling good about what I was doing. So I've just learned with age and wisdom to say, no, we don't need to do everything. We don't need to be superheroes. Say yes to the things that are important for you, for your family, but learn to say no. Two, to rest. Guys, taking this one hour out for yourselves tonight, I applaud you. This is the beautiful thing that your gift you're giving yourself tonight. And we often don't do that, especially this time of year. If we're going to cut something out of our schedule, it's, it's usually rest. We won't take the time to do a restorative class or um, we won't take the time to maybe take a nap that we, nest, we really could use or take the time to just sit and read and be restful. So take some time during these crazy days leading into the holidays to rest. Number three is to delegate. Who can you delegate some of your responsibilities to? It might make a family member happy to help. 
So look at your to-do list and see if, is there anything you could gather some help with? Maybe the cookie task could be a fun family experience instead of you doing it all yourself and getting stressed out with it. Maybe it could be a fun thing that you do together. Maybe you uh, entertain some help with wrapping gifts or um, with Christmas cards or any of your other obligations. Number four is to accept help. Sometimes people offer us help. And if you're at all like me, sometimes I have a hard time accepting that help. I want to feel like I can do it all and I never want to impose on other people. But I've learned that when people offer help, it makes them feel good to help. So learn to say yes. I've already uh, mentioned number five, breathe. Breathe, breathe. Take time to really just slow your breath, Take big inhales, big exhales. Be very aware of your breath and how it can calm you. When I feel myself getting nervous and worked up, I go to breath first. Prayer, breath, those are the things I go to. Number six, laugh. There is nothing more awesome than a good hearty laugh. Do that often during these next few busy days. Don't overeat or over drink. When we do that, it tends to make us feel very sluggish. It affects our sleep and it can actually really negatively affect our mood. So be aware of what you're consuming during this time. Number eight, listen to music. Like I said earlier, soft music, calming music, things that you love that can really relax you. And number nine, practice self-love, which is what you guys are doing here with me tonight. Um, the oils, self-massage, taking a hot salt bath. That's a wonderful thing that you could do. Um, anything that you find super relaxing, uh, reading a book, anything like that, visiting with a friend, having a glass of wine together, whatever it might be, practice some self-love. And I'm going to give you a choice to either stay in this position if you are loving it and this is so relaxing to you, or if you would like to find your favorite Shavasana position, feel free to do that. I love to bring a bolster or pillow under my knees and get set up that way and roll down onto my back. If you don't want a pillow or anything, you can certainly lay flat on the floor. You can bring your hands out, uh, palms facing up towards the ceiling. This is a great time if you haven't wrapped up in a nice cozy blanket to wrap up in a cozy blanket. But let's just get into your favorite pose, your favorite way to end your yoga class tonight. And we're gonna take a nice long Shavasana and I'm only gonna talk for a couple minutes and I'm gonna let you guys really relax. And as you're getting into this position and falling into a really deep state of relaxation, I hope you realize that you can choose to do this at any time. You don't need an hour. You can hop on your yoga mat, put some music on, burn a candle, even if it's 15 minutes, if you start to feel any tension building or 
any stress or overwhelm, think about some of these poses that we did tonight. Maybe what were your favorite two or three poses that really made you feel like you were letting go, that you were letting go any stress and tension that you were just taking on peace and calm and joy and happiness and find a few of those poses. And even if it's 15 minutes, it will bless your day and it will really help you. So as you're settling into a deep rest now, I really want you to focus on how do you want your holidays to look this year? What would make them wonderful for you? That you wouldn't be stressed, that you wouldn't be disappointed because your expectations were so high. What would make them just perfect? Maybe laughter with your family, maybe watching a wonderful Christmas show on TV. Start making a mental list of some things that you'd love to do and enjoy.
when you're ready and it's time to start wiggling a little bit, find some movements that can help you start to wake up a little, shaking your fingers and toes maybe, rolling your wrists, your ankles. You could do a big good morning stretch, reaching your hands towards one wall and your feet towards the other, stretching as far as you can stretch. And then go ahead and roll over onto your favorite side, coming into the fetal position, resting your head on your bicep, and fill yourself with gratitude. You probably had so many other things you could have been doing tonight that might have been scratching things off that to-do list. And you showed up for yourself and you gave yourself some self-love tonight. And I'm proud of you for that. And trust me, I'm taking all the advice that I gave you guys tonight and I'll be following all of these same tips that I've given you. When you're ready, come on up into seated position where we started tonight's class. It's so fun to have live students and I can see all of your beautiful lights and beautiful faces. And bringing your hands to heart center and closing your eyes if that feels comfortable. I really wanna thank you for showing up tonight. It's so fun for me to lead you through a practice that especially might help you with something that I feel like we all kind of struggle with during this season. And I just want us all to remember what we're really celebrating during this time does not require us to be stressed. We, we put all of those things on our list. Let's just really focus on the reason for the season. Let's focus on finding joy in all the small little things every day. There's miracles around us every day. And what we focus on, we do find. So let's not focus on the bad things that have happened in 2020. Let's focus on the blessings that we found in 2020. They're there. We just need to look for them, focus on them, and be grateful for them. Bringing your thumbs to your third eye center, taking a big inhale, and on your exhale, the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll be back a week from today to do one more class same concept, trying to help you guys de-stress for the holidays. Have a great night.